Welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, let's take a look at the Warlord Titan. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, so the Warlord Titan. This is my first attempt at trying to paint in a Warhammer style. Um, and I like it in some areas, I've hated it in others. It's the first time I've really sort of tried a number of blending techniques and things like that. But let's address the obvious. This thing is massive. It's massive. It is the correct scale for this particular piece, which doesn't sound like it's true, but it is. So these models at, um, at Games Workshop cost, I think they're about a thousand pounds over here, and I think they go for like 1,500 over, um, over in the US. Um, they, they, I mean, Games Workshop don't even, I don't even know if Games Workshop make these anymore. I think there's a second, there's a secondary seller who, who, who now casts them and makes them for them. These are part of the Titan series. This is the Warlord Titan. Um, this particular STL was off of Thingiverse, uh, but as many Warhammer um, viewers will know, the, the reality is, is that, um, is that, uh, Games Workshop are pretty hot on um, on their DMCA requests on things like on anything that looks like their IP. We're not really going to get into the IP conversation here because it's a very complicated one. I'm not a lawyer. I'm by no means an expert. The reality is is that Warhammer own the intellectual property rights to all of these things. People coming in and 3D printing things. The honest answer is that. Games Workshop don't like it because it detracts from their overall revenue. My, my take on it is that I would never have purchased this. I would never have gone out and bought it. So they haven't lost a customer by me making this. I made this because it was a cool looking thing. And actually before I even made it, I didn't really know that this was actually real. I thought this was something that, um, I thought this was just something that someone had made up and made it look like it was, uh, it was Warhammer. But before we go any further, let's take a quick 360 to try and look at some of this because I've painted this to the best of my ability. Um, but there's some, there's just so many details to be picked up here. So let's have that 360. So as you can see, there is just a huge amount of detail, even around the back. Um, I've done my best to try and uh, to try and paint this as well as I could. I haven't printed any of this in resin. It's all printed in FDM, and as a result, my panels aren't perfect. Right, I've got layer lines in some areas. It does almost spoil the print. Um, but I made this about about a year ago now. Um, I think. And to be honest with you, it took a long time. Like it was a lot of work, it was a lot of effort, there was a lot of printing. My printers really weren't dialed in at the time, or at least not dialed in as well as they are now. And I didn't have things like the Voron and things like that, which are absolutely astonishing machines. 
um, if I had if I had had the forethought, um, I could have actually attached magnets to all of these armor plates, and I could have actually had it so they were all interchangeable. But the details on this are astonishing. So things like the arms actually move. So they're on um, they're on they're they're like ball and socket joints. So the same with these. These have actually got pit pistons that actuate up and down. Like, it's insane, the level of detail and how poseable this is. There's little armor plates down here and the toes that can move. There's pistons that go into the hips that theoretically, if you were to print them perfectly, this would actually be movable as you are using it. Um, and then we come to the paint job. So I used an awful lot of rub and buff on this um, because I wanted to try and get that metallic look but still try and bring out and pop some of the colors. So um, rub and buff is a lazy man's way of trying to get metal effects. You, you prime in black and then you apply it with a cloth and you actually literally buff it on as if you were, as if you were polishing shoes. Um, and I feel like it's really helped me get some of the looks and feels and, and sort of that, that sort of worn look out of it. Um, these files are still floating around in various places. They pop up on Thingiverse every sort of, kind of every six months. They do the rounds until, until, um, until Games Workshop come back and do DMCA requests. Um, they're, they're on a few, you know, they're on a few, there's a few Facebook Warhammer 3D printing groups. These tend to come up and you get remixed models of them as well where you can change out the, uh, you can change out the guns or you can change out the arms. I think one of them's got like a big power fist and there's rocket launchers you can do for this and things like that. I went with this because I don't really know <laughs> any of the weapons. So I didn't put it on here for like for actual play to say I'm maximizing the, st the stats of this of this warlord. Um, I tried really hard with the shading and things like that. Um, there's a reality that the way that if you look at how miniatures are painted, and indeed Warhammer especially, there's a very stylized look, and it's a lot of edge highlighting, it's a lot of lighting effects, and things like that. Um, the honest answer is my painting just isn't there yet. Um, this was mainly done with an airbrush, um, and, and I really like the way that it came out. I think the overall effect is really good. I love the bronzes, the golds, the silvers where I've tried to pick out all of the rivets and, and everything else. I've, I've sort of, I've tried really hard to get the, to get the detail the way that I wanted it. And, and for the most part, I, I'm pretty happy. Um, this was a, this was a really a huge undertaking. There's about a month and a half worth of printing across multiple machines to get this done. And as I say, at the time, my machines really weren't where they needed to be. So, um, so like some of the quality meant that I had to, I did actually have to reprint certain parts. So believe it or not, even though some of these pieces aren't perfect, um, the ones that came before them were, con were, were objectively worse. Um, I mean, I just, I, I it's a huge imposing piece. Um, and I, I, I really enjoyed making it. I, I hope you guys think that I did a good job. It's probably one of the most complicated paint jobs that I've done because even when we look at things like the Terran Battle Cruiser that we did um, ages and ages ago, because the model is large and for the most part is actually one colour, it's actually not that hard to paint something that big. Um, the key really is in the smaller details. The armour panels on here, these kept me up at night. Um, if you were to actually line up all these panels next to each other, I don't think there's a single one that's the same colour blue. I've used the same blue throughout it, but the shading techniques and my work with an airbrush changed so much as I was going through it that I don't even think that, that most of these blues even match. So I'm glad they're not together. Um, I, re I, I really feel like 3D printing is about doing something yourself and then feeling genuinely proud of it afterwards, challenging yourself to do something new. And that's what I tried to do with this. 
you know, um, apart from just the scale, the painting techniques were, were really brand new to me. I'd never really done Warhammer before. I've certainly never done Warhammer miniatures. So even if I was good at a Warhammer miniature, I then got to scale that up to Titan scale. Um, and the reality is, is this didn't cost me anywhere near a thousand pounds. You know, there's probably, I think there's about 40 to 40, uh, 45 pounds worth of, of, of filament in this. And then there's maybe another 20 pounds worth of paint because most of this, again, is actually rub and buff. And rub and buff is actually fairly cheap because it goes really far. Um, so I really love it. I hope you guys love it too. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We've got loads more stuff coming up. Uh, and maybe, who knows, at some point, maybe when we get our larger resin printers, maybe I'll have a go at doing a, doing a, a twin for this one, but maybe do it in Necron colours or something like that, because those glowing greens are really cool. So, thanks very much for joining us, guys and dolls. We'll see you soon.